Hi guys, and welcome to the Accrington Stanley vs Sunderland match review. So, Sunderland have just got a win away from home at the Wham Stadium by two goals to nil. We're continuing this amazing run at the minute, this unbeaten run, and we've done it tonight. Not in the prettiest of ways, don't get me wrong, but uh, we've got another three points away from home against Accrington Stanley, a team that I previously, you know, I, I expected a win, or at least I was hoping for a win, given that Aki the, had gone into this game with losing two on the bounce. So I was expecting a win given our run of form, but for the majority of the season they've been sort of around the top six. Only recently have they dropped away. So I wasn't by any means expecting an easy game and it was it was by far an easy game, although I think it would, I'd be giving credit or at least a bit too much credit to Aki if I said that they were particularly good this evening because I don't think they were. Um, but I don't think we were great either. But uh, getting into the game, as I say, three points is three points. Couldn't care less. But we'll get into the match review. So we do have, um, as a starting eleven, we had Burge in goal. And we started off with a 3-4-3 formation with Dion Sanderson returning to the lineup. Of course, he was cup-tied for the game at Wembley. He was in the middle of a back three with O'Neill and Conor McLaughlin. Then there's the four in midfield. We had Winchester... We had Power moving up to the midfield. We had Gooch on one side. We had Vokin starting on the other side. Then up top, alongside uh, Wyke, we had McGeady and we had Diamond starting as well. They've come in and look quite bright in the cup final. So that then what started. But then after sort of five, ten minutes, you know, uh, you can see we were sort of trying to keep it on the ground, but it weren't really happening because the, the pitch was terrible. It was cut up. It was bobbling. But I feel like every time we did try and keep it on the ground, that's when we were creating chances. That's when our quality was showing with the likes of Gucci McGeady getting at them. Diamond at times, although Diamond in that first half, I think he did have a bit of a mare. And I think the frustrating thing with Diamond is that he is so inconsistent, even within just the one game, if that makes sense. Because for every half-decent thing he'll do, he'll combat that with an incredibly shit thing that he'll do. And that's not me, you know trying to rinse the lad or, or give him abuse. I'm not. I'm absolutely not. It's just more frustrating because I know what he's got in his locker, you know, and that's why it's so frustrating. And yes, he's young. He's going to be rough around the edges. But some things I just think, Jesus Christ, man, you're better than that. Like, you know, it'll go through one uh, period of play, passage of play, where it'll beat one, he'll beat two. Then they'll put a dangerous ball in the box. I'm thinking, right, okay, he's on it today. And then there's another time where a ball it gets pinged over to him. It's literally at head height. And then it's kind of just... <laughs> Leaped at it like a salmon, completely missed the ball. I'm trying to head it in a strange way, but just missed the ball. And I'm thinking, have you ever played football before? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm not just taking the piss out of that, but it looked stupid as hell. And he did it directly in front of Lee Johnson. He had his head in his hands. The second he saw it, he was like that because it was just ridiculous. And then there'll be another chance where you know he's got many the side of him, he's driving at him, and he'll just hoof it over the top straight to the keeper when there's really no need for it. But then, like I say, equally, he'll take on a man, he'll have a good crack at goal and it forces the keeper into a save. But like I say, the inconsistencies within one performance is there and that's why he was brought off at half-time. But what had disappointed me, like I say, you know, 10-15 minutes, you can see we were trying to play it along the ground and that's when we were really asking questions of Aki. But then I feel like Aki really forced their game plan onto us, which was hoof it football. And it really was hoof it football. And we almost sort of subconsciously fell into their game plan rather than really forcing our own game plan. We were just hoofing it back to him and it was awful. Winchester and uh, and Power in the middle, they were just like this. Almost for the entirety of that second, sorry, the first half, the majority anyway, just watching it go over the edge because it would just hoof it, hoof it, hoof it. Every now and then, sort of every sort of 15 minutes or so, McGeady might get his foot on the ball and then really try and work something. But we weren't really creating anything in saying that. Aki weren't either. I'd say the first half we had the better of the chances, little half chances we were making here and there. Oh nine 9 point blank range at a header. I couldn't believe he missed it. We didn't at least hit the target. Great ball in from Lyndon Gooch. Point blank range, I could say. Free header, completely free for Luke R9. And if there was two goals there, it, right next to each other, it would have gone wide of that one as well. It was such a poor header from Luke. And you know how much I love him, but Jesus Christ, that was a 50 pence header. Do you know what I mean? That was so, so bad. But they went straight up the other end, Aki, from a corner. We pulled one back and we played a short corner, pulled it to Winchester on the edge of the box. Shot was blocked, they went straight up the other end. And it was one-on-one, uh, -on -one. it was only Vokins who was back. Um, and their striker managed to break forward. He puts it past Burge and just past uh, the bottom right-hand corner. But we go into half-time where I was thinking we probably just about scraped it. But it was a scrappy affair and it could have gone either way. Because like I say, the pitch was terrible. The ref was absolutely piss poor as well. Missing blatant fouls. Booking players for seemingly no reason. Both Aki and our players. It, it was a joke at half-time. You can see Lee Johnson really getting into the face 
of the um, of the referee, and it, it was crazy how bad they were. There was times where you know Charlie Wank, and you know I, I haven't complained about referees for a while, to be honest with you, it's probably because we're not losing. Um, <laughs> but there were times where Charlie White were literally getting sandwiched. They'd have one man throttling him from behind and they'd have another one backing into him from the front. Charlie White and then gets wrestled to the floor and then Aki somehow get a free kick for it. It was genuinely fucking amazing to see how shit one referee can be. It was really that poor. But either way, we go into the second half and we had to make a change because we were really full into fit football territory and we're not about that. And I, I, I wasn't prepared to sit through another half of that shit. But Ross Stewart, come on. Who, like I say, you know, I, I didn't expect him to really feature um, tonight. I, I thought maybe if he was, he'd come on for the last five minutes, but he'd come on at half time, Diamond come off, because like I say, he did have a bit of a shocker, but we weren't really creating. Ross Stewart went up, we changed the formation, Stewart went up uh, up top with Charlie Wyke, and the midfield turned into a five, and straight away you could see he was on it. We get a free kick just inside the Aki half, the ball is bumped in towards the back post, and there is Ross Stewart, all six foot three, six foot four of him, absolutely massive, the lad. Rises like a salmon, and he nods the ball over the keeper. He tried to put it back towards, or sorry, back across goal, and it's gone just over the bar at the back post. At this point, I thought, we've got another outlet here, because Charlie White, you know, like I say, he was getting thrown around, sorry, thrown around like a rag doll, and the referee was giving absolutely nothing. So we needed another outlet, another physical outlet, and to me, he looked very mobile for a big lad as well. Relatively quick, he looked good with his feet, and, it, and it's something relatively different, you know. Of course, recently or over the last you know few months, we've literally just been able to pump balls into the box and Charlie White's going to head him in nine times out of ten. But on the off time, or the off chance that Wack isn't having a great game because he weren't, and he was getting fouled like there was no tomorrow, we need another outlet who can play to our strengths um, in, in our system that we like to play as well. And, and I thought we, we had that straight away as soon as I saw Ross Stewart. And... Of course, it's him who gets the goal. So, ball's put in. Again, I think it was Gooch. I could be wrong, but it was a set piece. Ball's put into the box. And there is Stewart. And, uh, again, he's put it back across goal. But the ball stayed in the air for so goddamn long. Stayed in the air so high that it just dipped just in at the back post. Beats the keeper. The keeper could have argued it in a lot better. But it was that slow motion. We're just watching it for ages and ages. And bang, it's in. It's 1-0. And uh, from this point, it, it just did become a horrible, horrible game. It was the most Sunday league game uh, I've seen this season. It, it's actually quite difficult to do this match review because not much happened apart from everyone was kicking seven shades of shit out of each other, poor refereeing decisions, that kind of thing. But then Charlie White finished it off uh, not too long from the end. Corners put into the box and there's Charlie to nod it in. 2-0, we made a few subs. You know, Aidan McGeady was getting very frustrated. He uh, kicked the ball away, booted the ball away at one point, so we got booked for it. I think he kicked the uh, the advertising boards at one point as well, just out of frustration himself. Um, so we brought the likes of, you know, Maguire on and uh, and led bit of Scowen, you know, to see the game out. And we did. So, you know, I, I can't fault the lads for their efforts this evening. It, it was just a very poor um, sort of display. I, I mean, it's difficult because I don't want to say the lads played poor because they put a lot of effort in on a very, very poor pitch and against the team that... For me, they weren't really there to play football. They were just a little bit dirty at times and then just hoof it. You know, that, that's all it really was. So to get a result away from home uh, against Aki, who generally they're quite good at home as well, to come away with a 2-0 win, it's a clean sheet. And to go in with a win like that, to, to go in to play Lincoln this weekend, which is an absolutely colossal game, it's a vital, vital three points tonight. Really, really can't do it enough justice to tonight's results. So let's have a look at the league table now anyway, which is the most exciting part. If we have a look at the league table now, we are currently in third. We've leapfrogged uh, Lincoln, who we do play this weekend. We are currently in third, Lincoln in fourth. We're on 63 points. We have a game in hand as well over Lincoln. We also have two games in hand over Hull, who are top of the league. We're only five points behind them. So if we win those couple of games in hand, then we're at least minimum in the top two. But that all depends on how Peterborough do, because, of course, we're two points behind them, but we've played the same game. So it's looking like we're sort of separate, separating ourselves from the pack a little bit there. But as you can see, Doncaster are now seven points behind us in fifth with only one game in hand. So we're really pulling away from the pack a little bit there. All we need to do is keep our heads up, Keep fighting, even if we don't put out the best of displays, just keep fighting, like I say, put in 100%, and I'm more than confident that these lads can grind out results, and that's what it is, you know, it's a cliche saying, you know, um, it's a sign of champions if you're picking up three points, yet you're not playing very well, and that's exactly what we did tonight, we didn't play perfectly, it was a very ugly game of football, we've come away with a lovely 2-0 win, a clean sheet in three points, that's all I can ask, you know, and I will give my man a match to Ross Stewart, because I feel like he really changed the game for us, 
in that second half, you know. Give us another outlet. Big lad, mobile. It looks really, really exciting. So we'll give him that. So yeah, I'm really, really excited. I'm really happy with that result. What do you guys think of the game this evening? Who was your man of the match as well? But if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jumped.